Welcome back, folks. Another edition of Patriot Network TV, and we are honored and privileged to have with us today by phone from the great state of Montana, the greatest state, the fourth largest state in the union, the big sky country, the treasure state. We're honored to have with us Major General Paul Vallele, who is retired from the U.S. Army, who did more than three decades of service for you when you didn't know what's the great line, you sleep safe in your bed at night because rough men stand at the ready to do violence in your name to protect you. So General, welcome to the show. Well, thank you, uh, Terry. Uh, it's, uh, it's a great pleasure to be on Patriot Network, and I thank you and applaud you and Quan for everything that uh, you do each day to uh, promote the, uh, the network. I'm, I'm happy to be able to help you today in going through some issues. All righty, real good. Let's start. I, I think it's very important for people to understand the resume that you have, the work experience and the great service that you've given to the United States. So let's start with West Point. You're a graduate of West Point. Yes, I uh, went into West Point in 1957 uh, from uh, a small town north of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, I was 17, one month out of high school. <laughs> I'm very naive and didn't know much about the military and was able to go through uh, there. And uh, once I graduated in 1961, uh, received a Bachelor of Science degree in engineering and then went off to Airborne Ranger and Infantry School and then to my first assignment with the 82nd Airborne in Europe. Uh, came back from that, uh, uh, went to Vietnam, came back from Vietnam in 66, went back over in 67, 68, and then, of course, uh, finished my career uh, uh, in Pacific Command uh, and retired uh, as a major general and, of course, have been active ever since uh, uh, in a number of different entities, including my current position, which is the chairman of Stand Up America. Let's, let's take a second and talk about Stand Up America because I believe your uh, affiliation with Stand Up America is totally consistent with your patriotic service given to the U.S. military. Tell our viewers and listeners about Stand Up America. Well, we formed Stand Up America in 2006 and uh, my co-founder in that was uh, Gerald Mullen uh, who uh, uh, produced the movie Obama 2016 last year and Jerry was also an Oscar award winner for Schindler's List so Jerry and I formed it together uh, basically going to provide a, uh, a project or oriented organization that would analyze uh, national events uh, national issues and to be able to bring those to television radio uh, as well as the internet publications as well as uh, publishing a number of different books and brochures so uh, that's what we've been involved in uh, since nine, well 2006 so uh, uh, seven years now we've been out there uh, we have a great internet site which is standupamericaus.org and we publish probably uh, uh, more near intelligence and information on a daily basis than any other uh, internet site uh, with direct uh, support from about 10 military analysts and intelligence analysts that work for us. So if, so if a, one of our viewers wanted to get the straight information, not the filtered, not the biased, but the straight information on what was happening, say, in Benghazi or in Algeria, they would go to Stand Up America first. That would be the first stop on the way, right? That's correct. And we have fed, of course, over the years, a number of... Uh, uh, inside information, maybe about uh, 24 hours before the news cycle to uh, the likes of Glenn Beck, Fox News, a number of radio talk show hosts throughout the country. So uh, we've been able to get uh, our message out uh, uh, into a lot of entities. We know the CIA and the FBI uh, look at our information every day uh, and see what we're producing out of our direct contacts, for example, in the Middle East. All righty. Well, for all of our viewers, I want to urge you, when you want the real information from the real experts, Stand Up America is your source. That's the first place to go. That's, that's where you want to stop first. Now let's talk about your take on the documentation or lack thereof behind the occupant of the Oval Office since the, yesterday was the second inauguration and the second swearing in of this president. Let's talk about the extent to which the documentation that you have seen is either incorrect, insubstantial, or clearly fraudulent. Well, let, let, 
me put it this way. Uh, John McInerney and I, uh, who's one of the other co-founders of Stand Up America, we were very uh, uh, taken back by the release uh, from the White House of the uh, copy of the birth certificate uh, for uh, Barack Obama. And we had a number of our analysts uh, look at it, and immediately within 24 hours we knew that it was a forgery. But yet nobody else took up the uh, banner other than a few other uh, columnist uh, and some websites. Uh, nobody in Congress would do it. But I can recall at 17 years old, uh, when I went into West Point, the first thing I had to do, uh, even getting cleared, was uh, a background check uh, before we could even be accepted into West Point. And then to get a confidential clearance our first year. And then, of course, once we uh, left West Point, uh, then we had to uh, get further clearances. In my case, uh, when I went to Europe with the 82nd, I was an intelligence officer, so I had to get another background check uh, before I got a secret clearance. And then uh, uh, it, it evolved into a nuclear position I had that was the old Davy Crockett, uh, which was a, a ground-launched uh, nuclear, uh, small nuclear weapon. And for that, I had to get a top secret clearance as well as what they call a uh, prefix five clearance. So uh, to get where I got, I had to have a lot of clearance and continued background checks. And of course, we know that uh, Obama has uh, and his uh, supporters have spent uh, millions of dollars uh, covering up or concealing all his background information, especially at the colleges, uh, the use of uh, duplicate or uh, 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 several uh, social security numbers. And so the question remains today, is this uh, gentleman that's in the White House uh, uh, properly cleared and vetted uh, president? Uh, we know even at the state level, Terry, a lot of the states don't vet these people that run for office, whether they're uh, legal or, uh, or illegal. And so our system, is, to me, is completely broken down and validating the, the leaders that we put not only in the executive branch and the appointments they're in, but also uh, 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 some of the congressional members and even into the court system. Uh, so we're not getting uh, the best and brightest uh, to lead our country, and we can see the state of affairs that we're in now, that uh, that's very true. But I, I think this particular group uh, in the White House now is probably the most corrupt, uh, deceiving uh, organization I've ever seen, and it's permeated all through the State Department, even into the Defense Department. And we can see it all the way from uh, uh, Benghazi, uh, all the way up through what we see going on uh, in Algeria and even Syria today. The American people are not being told the truth of what's really going on. And of course, having just returned from the Syrian border twice in the last six months, I can tell you, we have no respect, no credibility overseas. And uh, it seems to be reduced uh, uh, globally uh, each and every day by the lack of action and lack of leadership of the people in Washington, D.C. I, I find it amazingly ironic that if you look at the 23 executive orders that the president signed to quote unquote deal with gun violence, if the president of the United States wanted to buy a firearm, I don't think he could pass the background check because he has multiple social security numbers, doesn't have a good birth certificate, and doesn't seem to have a stable, I mean, you know, there are, there are a number of things that would be red flags at, at, or should be red flags at BATF against someone getting a weapon. I don't think he can pass the background check that he set up for himself. Well, I don't think so either, but again, back to the vetting system for these uh, political people is not what it is uh, like in the military. It's almost a day we could have someone in this country run for office, uh, they could win, and in fact, uh, no vetting back to track their background, and you know, it brings into mind the Manchurian candidate, how easy that uh, individual uh, would be to uh, integrate uh, into our government at any level. We know, for example, the Muslim Brotherhood is already uh, infiltrated into agencies uh, in Washington, D.C. And even under Bush, uh, we had the Muslim Outreach Program, where we put two Muslims in the Defense Department, very questionable, and fired uh, Steve Coughlin, who was a major at the time, because uh, he said we're being infiltrated by uh, by his radical Islamist group. So. Uh, We've been completely infiltrated across the board, uh, Terry, uh, and, and to the point where we have weakened our government so much, uh, it's going to take a tremendous turnaround 
uh, to get this country back on track again because of all the damage that's been done. Now, do you think because you see things in strategic terms, in strategy from the Greek word strategium to win at the direct expense of your enemy, do you think because you see things in strategic terms it's easier for you to understand what the goals of a group like the Muslim Brotherhood are rather than people who are schooled in some kind of pie-in-the-sky utopian vision of the Brotherhood of Men? Well, I do, and I, I mean, I even go back uh, through uh, the Bush years and uh, even Clinton uh, and even Bush won, that there was not ever a clear understanding of the global caliphate, and that's the uh, completely uh, the complete takeover of world uh, affairs both governments, Western governments particularly, uh, by the Muslim Brotherhood. And, of course, they've been around. You know, they were kicked out of uh, Egypt in uh, 1954. They ro relocated uh, into uh, Medina and Mecca, mostly Medina, and they've worked out of Saudi Arabia uh, since the 50s. And, of course, now they're back in uh, uh, running Egypt uh, with Morsi. Uh, I know under uh, President Bush uh, particularly, we try to get a lot of uh, our military uh, as well as government officials uh, really ramped up on understanding uh, the Muslim Brotherhood and the global caliphate, but they wouldn't listen. Uh, I can tell you that even President Bush and Cheney were very naive when it came to that. And in particular, even our senior military generals and uh, the admirals uh, that I have met with, uh, even back uh, in the early 2000s when we went into Afghanistan, did not understand the enemy that we're dealing with. And we hear the phrase, General, we hear the phrase all the time that we need to appeal to moderate Muslims. Uh, are there any moderate Muslims? Is that, is, is that a misstatement of fact, or is it important for people to understand that if, to be a Muslim you must subscribe to Sharia law? Uh, no, and I, I, I can validate that by the seven Syrian commanders uh, that I met with uh, inside of Turkey and in Istanbul, my latest trip being in November. Uh, these were uh, 70 commanders who came across to meet me. Uh, they were part of the Free Syrian Army. And uh, one of the young commanders came up to me in, in broken English, and he said, basically, you know, he said, we never understood democracy, and we still don't. But he said, finally, now we understand what freedom is. Oh, and talking to them over there, they were very much secularists. They were not radical Islamists. And so I break it down like this. There, there are Muslims uh, that don't even practice Islam. They don't go to the mosque, and I know several of them. Uh, there's a second group that uh, do go to the mosque. They do pray, but they're not radicals. Uh, and they do believe in, um, you know, trying to uh, develop even here in the United States their own businesses and that. Uh, then there's the third group, which are what we call the Islamists. These are the radicals. This is the uh, radical interpretation uh, of the uh, of the Koran. And so those are the three groups, in my experience, that exist out there. Uh, now, the other two groups outside of the radicals really don't speak out that much. There are a few. Um, they're... Um, Rudy Zasser, for example, out of Phoenix, he's one of the Muslims that does speak out against radical Islam. But uh, that's not enough because the radicals are winning. Uh, they're winning all over the Middle East. Uh, they've infiltrated completely into Holland. The Holland's, uh, the Dutch are taking much stricter, or making much stricter uh, laws and procedures of immigration. And if you go into London, where I was uh, a little over a month ago, and see how radical Islam uh, and Muslim taken over areas of England, where if, if you're an outsider, I just got a video of that, you walk into a Muslim neighborhood, they actually have Muslim police enforcing Sharia law in the outskirts of, uh, of London. Shakespeare but, would uh, turn over in his the grave. Infiltration here in America, that's why it's important with the Patriot Network and veterans that we are the backbone of this country. And we're the ones that are going to have to stand up because I fully believe there will be a revolution in this country of some sort. I'm not sure what it's going to look like. But uh, all the grounds uh, uh, that's being developed at grassroots level that we're sick and tired of uh, this tyrannical government that we have now that is inept and corrupt, uh, you have a Congress that's uh, totally uh, 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 unable to get anything done 
you have a court system that's been corrupted. So I don't see any other source other than the replacing the government we have some way, because we can't let America continue to go over the falls uh, and the cliff as we have. So that's why I keep emphasizing that the patriots of America, the enforcers of the First Amendment and Second Amendment and the Constitution stand tall, particularly this year, 2013. With, with that in mind, the current events, starting with Benghazi and moving through Algeria, when, when I look at those events, I see the federal government of the United States absolutely ineffective in dealing with terrorism. And if you could speak to our viewers about, it, it seems to me that this is driven by Al Qaeda. It seems to me that I've seen interviews in the New York Times and on the BBC with the gentleman who claims that he was the mastermind of the Benghazi attack. And he's sitting in a luxury suite in a fancy hotel telling these stories. And you would think that if somebody thumbed us in the eye that hard, we'd send somebody, we'd, you know, we'd have to have somebody in the government who could go over and silence that guy if there was any will for it. But we don't seem to have the will to silence our enemies. Well, no. We don't, and it, it is planned by the Obama administration to reduce uh, our power in the world uh, in two ways, economically also as a military power. If you go on the Stand Up America site, you'll see our new 10,000-page e-brochure on there called Obama Evolution and Legacy. Uh, we're also producing within the week a special report on Benghazi. Uh, Charles Woods uh, called me several weeks ago, and I'm working with him now. He's the father of Ty Woods, uh, who was killed in Benghazi. And to cover up uh, the information that he's received uh, is just uh, mind-boggling to the, to the Woods family. Now, here's a family that lost their son. They can't get an answer. Uh, I think Hillary is supposed to uh, testify today or tomorrow. So we'll see what she has to say, but they cannot lie, let this dog lie. I mean, they've got to do something about this cover-up. And uh, the, the arms dealing uh, uh, innuendos that are being made, that they're really coming up another arms deal, fast and furious deal over there in the Middle East of supplying arms and equipment up to uh, Syria uh, to the wrong guys, to the Islamists up there. Well, oh, as this whole uh, this whole cocktail that they've mixed up back there in Washington, uh, and they're getting away with it because, again, very few in Congress, even especially the Republicans, no one really stands up. They seem to go into this thing like Isa has done on or Issa Darrell Issa out of uh, out of California, but they go so far and then they seem to stop. They back off. Well, I tell now, you, Obama gets he, his way. here in Arizona. We are still angry, and by we, I mean everybody who asks young men to put on a uniform and make us safe against our enemies. We're still angry about the way that border agent Brian Terry was treated by this government. Specifically, Holder is the most corrupt, most incompetent attorney general that's ever served in that position. And that just was. the betrayal of the Terry family and the way that they have lied to Brian Terry's mother and father. And, and the whole of that story is so heartbreaking. And the more that you dig into it, it's just dirty from the word go. And the fact that Holder will not do anything to come clean on that. And the fact that the members of the House don't hold. If I was in the House of Representatives, I'd be on the floor every day proposing a new bill to stop all funding to the Justice Department until Holder gave us everything we wanted. Absolutely. And see, that's the thing. They hold the purse strings. They can shut a lot of this stuff down, but they just won't do it. They're, they're not courageous enough. They don't have enough cojones. Uh, another a couple that I talked to where there's another cover-up going on, we're working on that as an investigative report. I talked to Billy and Karen Vaughn. Now, that name may not ring a bell to you, but they lost their son in the helicopter went down with the SEALs oh, right, over right. a year and a half ago. And the cover-up there by the general, and even the admiral in the Navy was in charge of the SEALs. Uh, so we're going to expose that for what it is. So that these cover-ups from Fast and Furious to that helicopter that went down, the rules of engagement uh, that were not, uh, that were so restrictive that uh, that helicopter did not have any fire support going in. It was an, an older helicopter, not a black ops helicopter, an MH as we call it. So 
So you keep going through that to Benghazi. You look a in the Syrians, I just had a, a phone call with some of the Syrian commanders of the Free Syrian Army, and they're saying, we've lost over 60,000 people. We have a government that's bombing its own civilians, casualties. We can't even get humanitarian aid inside the country, uh, though the Turks are doing a, a really good job of humanitarian support there. But the Syrian, the Free Syrian cast out, what are you going in? You're going into Benghazi here. You're going into uh, uh, assisting in Algeria. You're assisting here. You're assisting the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. You're giving them fighters. You're giving them tanks. And you won't even help us destroy a tyrant who's as bad or worse than Hitler. Absolutely. But you see how they feel in Syria, and nobody gives a damn about them. Well, it's a general, I think with your description of that, I, I think we're going to end this second segment right about now, but I just want to underscore, we don't get that kind of reporting and, you know, we've, we've empowered through the constitution, the national media to do it and they're not doing the job. And thank God, patriots such as yourself are out there doing the job. Folks, we're going to go ahead and cut this one off right here. We'll have one more session today with the general and we'll be right back. <laughs>